good YouTube? It's your boy Reggie from HBCU Spotlight, and I'm back with another banger. Today we have some breaking news. But before we get into that, as you can see, it appears that 98% of the channel's viewers are not subscribed. Hit the subscribe button and like button on your way in so I can keep delivering you this content as soon as it drops. Without further ado, let's get into it. From the title, we all know that HBCU slash FCS football is back. Today we have the Tigers of Edward Waters College set to face off against the extremely popular and heavy favorites, Tigers of Jackson State University. On this video, we will take an in-depth look at both teams, what they bring to the table, the players to look out for, and ultimately, who I think will win. The game can be seen on ESPN3 at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central. The weather is expected to be 55 degrees and slightly cloudy, so the weather shouldn't be a factor in today's outcome. First up, we have the Tigers of Edward Waters. Edward Waters College is a private institution located in Jacksonville, Florida, that was founded in 1866 by members of the African Methodist Episcopal Church as a school to educate freedmen and their children. Today, they have an enrollment of just under 3,000 students, a tuition price of $14,878, and proudly reps the colors of purple and orange. They have an acceptance rate of 56%. If any of this interests you, go ahead and apply to the school. In terms of football, the Tigers out of Jacksonville are almost started from scratch. The program returned in 2001 after a 34-year hiatus. Since then, they haven't really been able to get on track. They've had two winning seasons since 2001. They had a record of 5-4 in 2003 and an 8-3 record in 2004. Coach Greg Ruffin is entering his third season as the Edward Waters head coach. He holds a record of 5-17 while at the helm. The team will have a ton of new faces. Coach Ruffin and his staff have recruited 44 new players that will don the purple and gold for the first time in this abbreviated spring season. They are returning 12 starters and 32 lettermen. Their leading passer is returning for another season. Sophomore quarterback Rashard Branch out of Plantation, Florida went 84 of 159 passing last year had a 59.9 completion percentage, had 992 yards through the air, eight touchdowns, and six interceptions. Their backfield is low-key stacked compared to the rest of their team. They have two standouts returning from the 2019 squad, including sophomore running back Deshaun Hughie, who finished with 792 yards rushing on 143 carries, averaged 5.5 yards per carry, and scored six rushing touchdowns and added a receiving touchdown as well. The Palm Coast, Florida native turned in back-to-back 100-plus -back yards rushing efforts in 2019 against Central State and Allen, including setting a program new single-game modern era freshman record with 183 yards and two touchdowns against Central State. Also returning to the Edward Waters College backfield this season are 2018 leading rusher Corey Hammett, who missed 2019, and the 2019 second leading rusher and returning senior and team co captain Malik Stevens, who had 52 carries and 230 yards on 4.4 yards per carry and four touchdowns last year. Defensively, the biggest change for the squad comes in the form of a new defensive coordinator. Former Tuskegee defensive coordinator Joseph Carter takes over an Edward Waters defense that struggled last season, surrendering 367.3 yards per game, 165.6 yards passing, and 201.7 yards rushing. Edward Waters returns as leader in sacks and tackles for loss, returning sophomore Jaron Wilson. The Jacksonville native had a phenomenal freshman campaign with 44 total tackles, 12 tackles for loss, four sacks, and an interception. 
Junior DB Cameron McLean also returns this season. After being second on the team in tackles with 51, with 8.5 tackles for loss, one sack, and one interception. On the opposing sideline, we have the Tigers out of Jackson, Mississippi, led by their first year head coach, Deion Sanders. He's the 21st head coach, and it's ironic that he wore number 21 while in the NFL. He was also introduced as the head coach on September 21st, 2020. Jackson State University is a public, historically black institution located in Jackson, Mississippi. It's one of the largest HBCUs in the U.S. and the fourth largest university in Mississippi. Jackson State University grew out of Natchez Seminary, founded in October 23rd, 1877. The school's name has changed numerous times over the years, but it became known as Jackson State University in 1974. Today they have an enrollment of a little over 7,000 students, an in-state tuition price of 8620 and an out-of-state tuition price of 19620 and proudly reps the colors of royal blue, white, and navy blue. They have an acceptance rate of 69%. If that interests you, go ahead and apply to the school. This may be Jackson State's first game on the field since hiring the new head coach, but they have already been working extremely hard. It's been a 24-7 grind for the unit, and the Tigers went out and secured the top class at the FCS level, and the best class at an historically black college and university ever. Similar to Edward Waters, Jackson State hasn't experienced much winning in recent years. They have not had a record above 500 since the 2013 season when they took home a SWAC East Division championship. The Tigers have several starters returning. They are led by their defense. The notable player to watch on that side of the ball is the multiple time All American, reigning SWAT Defensive Player of the Year, and the Spring 2021 SWAT Defensive Player of the Year, Keontae Hampton. Since earning a starting recension as a freshman, Hampton has consistently made an impact. Fall of 2021, the West Point Mississippi native tallied 106 tackles, 69 solo stops, and 37 assisted in a thrilling 31-28 overtime win over in-state foe, Mississippi Valley State. Hampton tallied a career-high 15 tackles and forced and recovered a fumble. Hampton averaged an eye-popping 13 tackles per game. In the Tigers' 4-3 base defensive package, Hampton shifted to an outside linebacker position. Khalil Arrington, the team's third leading tackle from 2019, will play a middle linebacker. Arrington finished with 49 tackles, 29 solo stops, and assisted with 21 tackles. Arrington also was, a, was disruptive behind the line of scrimmage and tallied four stops in the backfield. The defensive backs have a new look for the spring season. Dejan Warren, the number one ranked junior college player in the country. I did a video on him. Make sure you go back and check that out to learn more about how he got to Jackson State. And former four-star recruit and Florida State transfer Isaiah Bolden are projected to see significant minutes at the cornerback position. Markel Gladley, Kendrick Paul, JV and Adams, CJ Holmes, and Kevin Berthy will see time at the safety positions. On the defensive line, the Tigers return an experienced unit and welcome several newcomers that will see playing time. Miguel Pillow Smiley, Keyshawn Brinkley, Jamoin Crane, Vincent McIntosh, Devontae Davis, Rasheed Lyles, Tredarius Carr, Brian Mitchell, and Justin Reagan. Offensively, the Tigers will be explosive. At receiver, Daylon Baldwin, Brandon Sanders, Warren Newman, Christian Allen, Corey Reed, and Quartel, Court, Courtland Hubbard will see playing time. 
at tight end, Keelan Ritchie, Robert Washington, and Dwayne Stevens will see the field. In the backfield, Jalen Jones or Quincy Casey will start at quarterback. And Desmond Moultrie and Kamani Clark will see the action at running back. The offensive line will return an experienced group and welcomes a host of newcomers. Tony Gray, Devontae Graham, Cedric Dunbar, Vincent Sampson, Jacob Cunningham, Yosef Carter, Amari Ketchins, and David Okokaro are listed in the two deep. For anyone who was curious why I didn't mention Deion Sanders' four-star quarterback son, it is because he is not eligible to play until the fall. He enrolled early. He would still be a senior in high school. When it comes to my pick of who will win, in my opinion, the talent is a bit lopsided. So I have Jackson State winning by 18 points. I predict the final score of Jackson State winning 28-10. to 10. I went a little more in-depth on my predictions and used a site called VersusSportsSimulator.com, and it projected that Jackson State would win 45-13. to 13. I like this site, and we'll use it from now on when giving predictions. I like how it rates the teams. It gives them a letter grade as well, similar to a video game. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know who y'all think will win, and leave the final score what you think it will be. If you enjoyed this content, Please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. From us over here at HBCU Spotlight, we look forward to bringing you more breaking news first and keeping you up to date. We out of here. Peace.